My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We're here because we want to get ready for the GRE. We want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here. The official guide, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 243. Page 243, and today is our lesson number 134. Let's take a look at it. We are dealing with we are dealing with what is known as a piecewise function. Topic that's a topic that we already covered. A topic that we already covered on day number 130. So I'm not going to go into too much details. If you do not know what this graph is or what uh, what, what what piecewise function means, you need to go back and watch the video for day number 130. What we learned on day 30 is that this this function here, f of x equals to absolute value of x. What we learned is that it's an absolute value of x is that if you're going to plot it when x is 0 when x is 0 the value of the function which is the y value of the function is the y when x is 0 y is 0 when x is positive 1 or negative 1 when x is 0 y is 0 when x is positive 1 or negative 1 it doesn't matter whether it's positive 1 or negative 1 y is 1 that's the absolute that's what absolute value means even if x is negative 1 y is positive 1 when x is positive 2 or negative 2, the y is 2. When x is positive 2 or negative 3, positive 3 or negative 3, the y is 3. And the graph looks something like this. When x is 1 or negative 1, or x is negative 2 or positive 2, x is negative 3 or positive 3. That's what the graph looks like. Now the question is, what's going to happen to the shape of this graph? Now the question is, what's going to happen to the shape of the graph? If we were to take our original function, let's give it a new name here, this is the new function, if you were to take our original function and multiply it by 2, 2 times the absolute value of y, what would happen? What would the shape of the graph look like? Well that's very straightforward, very simple. What's going to happen is, this y here, is the value of the f of x, which is this one right here. Let's find out what g of x would be. g of x, again, when x is 0, this is a multiplication sign. This is, this is 2 times absolute value of x. 2 times absolute value of x. That was the multiplication sign. My multiplication sign is like this, and my x are, x's are like that. Just so you know. So, when x is 0, when x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, y, uh, y is also 0, just like before. So they both, the new graph also starts out here. Now when x is positive 1 or negative 1, you put it here, x equals positive 1 or negative 1. The absolute value of positive 1 or negative 1 is just 1, positive 1, times 2 is 2. So y is going to be 2. Similarly, when x is positive 2 or negative 2, when x is positive 2 or negative 2, y is going to be 4. And when x is positive 3 or negative, negative 3, y is 6. What we find is that all the values of y are doubled, which is exactly what this is, 2 times the, two times the value of the function. So this is 4 and this is 6. Let's plot them, shall we? See what it looks like. We're going to do it in a different color. When we, before I actually plot it, before I actually reach and start plotting it, can you tell me ahead of time whether the new graph is going to be skinnier or fatter than the old one? Is the new graph going to be skinnier or fatter? The answer is, is it's going to be skinnier because the y values are higher. So the graph, if the graph, if the graph looks like this, okay, watch here. If the graph looks like this, as the y values increase, the graph gets skinnier. If it looks like this, as the y value increases at every, at any given, for any given values of x. For any given value of x, the value of the y is twice as much as before. For any given value of x, the value of the y is twice as much as before. Therefore, 
it's going to become skinnier. It's going to look like this. Let's find out. Let's draw it. But before I draw it, let me write down what I just did here because it's, because it's good to make a note of it. For any given value of x, for any for any given value of x, the value of the y. Now, when I say when I use the article the, I mean the corresponding value of the y is what I meant to say. I'm just lazy to write it down. The corresponding value of the y is twice as much as before. Twice as much as before. For example, well here also it is technically true, it is twice as much as before. Before when x was 0, y was 0, so now when x is 0, y is going to be 2 times 0, which is still is 0, but technically it is twice as much. Before when x was y, y was when x was 1, y was 1. Now when x is 1, y is going to be 2 times 1. Y is going to be 2 times 1. So it's going to be here and here. Before, when x was 2, y was 2. Now, y is going to be 4. Voila. And your graph is going to look like this. The graph becomes skinnier. It is skinnier. But, of course, in the book, But of course, in the book, they do not say skinnier, because that will be too simple, that will be too easy. They use a different terminology. Make sure you get used to the terminology, because that's the language they use. And you have to understand their language if you, if you want to do well on the exam. In the exam, they're not going to say which of the following. They're going to give you a graph, and the question is going to be which of the following equations. And they're going to give you five equations, and the question simply will be which of the following equations is going to make the given graph skinnier. But they're not going to say skinnier, they're going to, they're going to put it differently. And that's the language you have, that you have to get used to. Here, the graph became skinnier. Before it was very fat, now it's skinny. The graph becomes skinnier, it becomes thinner. He's going on a diet. The poor guy's going on a diet. He, he comes inside. He, he falls inside. He's skinny. The book calls it Here it is. Believe it or not, this is what the, this is this is how they put it. Stretched. vertically away from the x-axis. Aha! I wonder who comes up with these things. It's stretched vertically away from the x-axis is how they put it. And I'm going to show you exactly what they mean by it. Here's our original graph. Here's our original graph. So I have my original graph. I'm going to show it with my two hands here. Here's the original graph and I'm going to stretch it vertically. As I'm stretching it vertically, I'm moving away from the x-axis. Here. Here's the original graph. We're going to stretch it vertically. Voila. We're stretching it vertically and as we do that, we move away from the x-axis. See here, this one is very fat. As we stretch it vertically, we are moving away from the x-axis. We are here now. We keep stretching it. We move away even more from the x-axis. We are moving away from the x-axis. They could have said towards y-axis, it would have been just as well, just as fine. They could have said stretched vertically towards y-axis and that would have been fine too. But they prefer to say stretch vertically away from x-axis. I just call it skinnier, that's it. But their philosophy is very straightforward. Their philosophy is that why, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Why use one word when you can use half a dozen? That's their philosophy. That's a very euphemistic way of saying the graph is skinnier. What would happen? How do we make it fat? How do we make it fat? 
Should we talk about it? How do we make it fat? Let's talk about it, shall we? The original graph is this, y equals we call this function f of x, we gave it a name, we call it f and that was absolute value of x. The way we make it fatter is that instead of multiplying it by a given number, we divide it by a given number. We divide it by a given number. So we use, we used up g, g was this one, this was the g of x, 2 times absolute value of x. So this is this is f of x. This is the g of x. Let's use. Let's give it a brand new name. Let's call it h of x, the brand new thing, and that will be the absolute value of x divided by two. Now, what's going to happen is that for any given value of x, the y is going to be half as much. This one here, for any given value of x, y is going to be half as much. Y is going to be half as much because we're dividing it by 2. For example, before when x was 0, y was 0. Now, when x is 0, y is going to be half of 0. But half of 0 is still 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. So that one also starts out here. But then what happens? When x is positive 1 or negative 1, y is not going to be 1, y is going to be absolute value of 1, which is 1 over 2, which is half. y is going to be half. Let's put it here, I'm going to a different color, in the blue color. y is going to be half when x is 1, right here. When x is positive 1 or negative, positive 2 or negative 2, y is going to be positive 2, positive, positive 2 or negative 2 over 2, absolute value of positive 2 or negative 2 is just 1, uh, absolute value of positive 2 or negative 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is going to give you 1, before it used to be 2, now it's just 1, so when x is 2, y is going to be 1. Before, when x was 3, y equals, y was 3, now y is going to be 3 halves, when x is 3, y is going to be 3 halves, somewhere here, this is, this is 1, this is 2, so it's going to be somewhere here. One. Let's join. One. This becomes fatter. The blue guy is fat. The fat one is the blue one. It's very fat. Now, of course, they are not going to say which of the following equation makes the given graph fat. What they say is this. I'm going to put down their language so that you understand it. In their language, they say, I need the room, so I'm going to have to erase some of it. Well, we can erase this part right here. They don't say fat, they say shrunk, shrunk. Yes, believe it or not, they call it shrunk. This graph, the blue graph, according to them, is shrunk. It's shrunk, how is it shrunk? It's shrunk vertically towards the x-axis. Why did they say shrunk? Because their point of reference is x-axis, you see? Their point of reference is always x-axis and compared to x-axis this graph is now closer to it than the old one was. The old graph the old graph said here f of x. 
this guy is closer. And therefore, it is because it's closer to x-axis, they call it shrunk. I know, it's very annoying, very tedious. Shrunk vertically towards x-axis. When they're shrinking it vertically towards x-axis, it's fatter. So, let's put down this guy right here. What's the translation? Translation is, translation is, he's fat. But they don't want to call the guy fat, so they put it euphemistically, they say, he's not fat, he's just shrunk vertically towards the x-axis. That's what I, that's what I like to say when I meet somebody, you know, in a polite company. You don't want to ask the lady, have you gained weight? Of course not. Why well, ask her politely? I'm trying to think of a name of the my friend's wife here. Jennifer, I believe is her name. Jennifer, have you shrunk vertically towards the x-axis lately? Have you gained weight? Anyway, so that's what it is. It's fat. I use this word euphemistically. Let me let me close the video. Let me end the video on on that note. For those of you who do not know the word euphemism, when did we learn it? D9. For those of you who are interested in improving your vocabulary along with learning some math with me, you can watch my vocabulary videos. Just type in my name, Kishwani, and then just type in my name, Kishwani, and then vocabulary, D9. Type in vocabulary, D9, along with my name. And the video will pop right up and you will learn this word euphemism. What does it mean euphemism? What does it mean to put something euphemistically? It simply means to say something in a very polite and unoffensive way. To, to rephrase something which is ordinarily considered either impolite or offensive. So uh, these days this is considered impolite to say that the person is blind. We say that he is visually impaired. These days it is considered impolite to say that to say that you are retarded, you will say you are mentally challenged, you are physically challenged, you are... There are many, you know, people these days, nobody these days is short, people are vertically challenged. Well, you get the idea. Anyway, so that's why I asked her, I said, Jennifer, have you shrunk vertically towards the x-axis lately? Have you gotten fatter? Anyway, that will be the end of this video today. Tomorrow, We'll, we'll, we'll deal with the same notion. So, in case you want to, if you want to read this language, this language that I'm, that I'm pointing to, you will find this thing at the very bottom of page number 242. If you turn to page 242, read the very bottom, in the very last line, very last line of page 242, they say shrunk vertically towards the x-axis. That's what they're talking about. And two lines above it, they talk about the graph stretched vertically away from the x-axis. If you're stretching vertically away from the x-axis, your diet. Let's see what I have for tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll, do, we'll deal with the same notion, we'll deal with the same idea, except instead of dealing with this piecewise function, we'll, we'll deal with the parabola, but we'll talk about the same notion. We'll talk about how to stretch vertically a given parabola, or how to shrink it vertically towards the x-axis, how to make him fatter a given parabola. And that's what it is, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. And that will be our last video on these topics of geometry and then after that we'll start the exercises that you see there on page 243 which are going to go very fast. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow then. Bye now.